Hello my friends! It's been a while. First, I want to say a massive thank you again for all the nice comments under my community tab posts. For everyone who haven't read it, the short story. My external hard drive, where I stored all the finished video for the challenge, went into the hard drive hell. At least I hope so. If you want to know the details, you can pause and read it now or head over to the community tab after this video. In general, I will keep you updated there about everything that's going on and also run some polls whenever I need your guys opinion. For example, that this video became one big monster was your decision. About the giveaway I decided that this will be the last video with secret codes. Yes, you had me right, codes. Since this is a really long one, I included 5 codes and they will be the last. On the 25th of August, the giveaway will end. The upload schedule will be basically from now on. When a video is done, it's done and will be uploaded. I am aiming for one big and one to two item guides per week, but I can't promise anything. First, I will remake all the promised videos and afterwards, we'll see. There is one positive thing about the whole thing though. It gave me the opportunity to review my videos and honestly, I'm not 100% happy with my two weakness videos. I'm not saying that they are bad, far from it, but I have the feeling they just could have been more juicy content wise. That's why I took a different approach for today's video. But before we get into that, I want to say a big big thank you to Vakes Jesus who bought me 40 cups of coffee and of course to Vince as well, who's a buddy of mine. Thank you so much for your support. I just bought 3 new bags of coffee on Saturday. I think I've never mentioned it, but I love coffee. So again, thank you so much. Last, we have the usual 5 shoutouts for today and they go to Lark, DarkXia135, I'm a gamer 941, Ling Shinobu, and Hamza Ali. I think I don't need to tell you to write something nice anymore, because you guys are nice anyway. So, enough blah blah blah. Now, let's get into the meaty part. While re watching the weaknesses video, I realized that it would be more helpful to not only know the weak spots of a hero, but also to understand the general mechanics of a hero. If you understand how a hero works, you can predict what your enemy is most likely going to do next. I've implemented time steps for this one, so you can also jump to the heroes that interests you most. But I would highly appreciate it if you stick with me through the whole video. In case you didn't know, the longer people watch your videos, the more people will get this video recommended by YouTube. So in general, the best way to support your favorite YouTubers is watching the whole videos without skipping around. I'm trying to make it as interesting as I can, so you will learn many new things along the way you maybe never knew. Now, let's start with... Alice. I will not explain you the obvious things, like that she can teleport or that she restores HP with her ult. This is common knowledge that every one of you should know, but what you guys maybe didn't know is that whenever a minion dies close to her, a so-called blood orb is generated. With this, Alice increases her max HP by 10 and restores 50 mana. After absorbing 12 blood orbs, she receives 10% cooldown reduction, after 25, 15% bonus HP restoration and shield, and after 50, plus 40 movement speed. Why am I telling you this? Well, since she's mostly played on the side lane, it's very advisable to pick a very strong early game hero against her, who can zone her out from the minions early on. Before level 4, her damage is very limited, so you can take full advantage out of it. That also means to not fight against her while minions are around, after she reaches level 4. She can not only absorb their HP, but also restores mana when they die. In general, it's the best to shut her down early, because otherwise she will become a nightmare in the late game and tanky AF. Be aware that a good Alice player will try to reach the backline of your team with her first skill, so as frontliner, especially as tank, don't go too far away from your squishy teammates. Or as squishy hero, keep your tank close enough so that he can protect you. When Alice tries to escape, she usually throws her blood ball into one direction and runs into the opposite direction. Like this, you can't chase her alone, unless you play a very quick hero, like Ling or Fanny for example. So keep in mind, like I explained you before already, you don't need to necessarily kill an enemy to be able to take an objective. Don't waste your time by chasing an enemy you can't catch for sure. Let her run and focus on the objective, because that's what will bring you the victory. Now, let's talk about what are the best ways to fight her. One way is to use other regen heroes, since they can stall the fight for so long that Alice runs out of mana. And without mana, she's pretty much doomed, like almost all heroes who use mana. 
By the way, that's in general something you should always keep an eye on. You can always see the enemy's mana. So if you see that an enemy has low mana, it's a good indicator that you could engage aggressively against them. Anti-heal obviously works really well against her too. The three anti-heal items are Sealer Bird, Necklace of the Runs and Dominance Eyes. What also works against her is Demon Hunter Sword on Heroes, who uses basic attacks. With a passive effect, you can melt on a huge amount of HP easily. Otherwise, your team shouldn't stay all on one spot, where she can drain all of you out of life, while you're making almost no damage because of her regen. Find the right balance in between near, but not too near. Stunning her before she can use her ult and just burst her down also works very well, at least until the late game. Last, shooting her down from a safe distance is another good way to beat her, if you have a hero who can keep the distance, or an awesome tank who can protect you from her. Before we move on, let me tell you a little trick that she could use. She can use the frozen effect from Winter Trunction and keep your ult active, just that you are aware of that. Aurora. She is one of the many one-shot mages in the game. The mechanic of her is quite simple. Whenever she uses a skill, she gains a stack of frost energy. Once she has 4 stacks, she can freeze an enemy hero for 1.5 seconds when she's hitting them with a skill. That she can do instantly with her second skill. She also deals 20% extra damage to the frozen target. So always be super careful around her when she has 3 or 4 stacks up. Why 3 you may ask? Well, she could simply use her first skill, which is an aiming skill, and directly use her second on you, which is a target locked skill. The second plus old combo is enough to at least damage an enemy heavily. In general, when you play against a one shot mage, bushes are your worst enemy as squishy hero. Never ever just run blind into them. Either play a hero who can check bushes with their skills, like Agura, Lilia, Nana or Selina for example, or go together with a tank who is checking them for you. Little note for all tank users, please check the bushes for your squishy teammates. If not, it's almost certain that you will get ambushed by her. Also, never underestimate her poking ability. This one you will hear more often from me. With her first and second skill combined, she can deal easily over 1000 magic damage. So as squishy hero, it's enough to get poked twice, to be basically out of HP. Dodge it as many times as possible and keep your distance. So, what works well against her? First, the most obvious, Athena's shield. When you're the target of her ambushes, mostly as squishy hero, I would highly recommend that you build Athena's shield after your core items. This will prevent that you're being one-shotted non-stop. What also works very well is Purify, or a hero who have a CC removal skill. As a tanky hero, you also don't need to be too afraid of her, especially when you've built Athena's shield. Then you can make her as your priority target and give your squishy teammates a much easier time to clear up the rest of the enemies. Her biggest strength is also her biggest weakness in the end. Ambushes works really well against her, especially when her stacks are not up. Otherwise any stuns and huge burst damage is also very effective. That counts for almost all squishy mages though, since they lack their escape skills once you've caught them. Another thing you will hear me saying more often. Cecilion. What makes him so strong in the late game is that whenever he hits a unit with a skill, he stacks up his passive. That gives him extra mana and his skill damage increases with the maximum amount of his mana. That's why he becomes stronger and stronger the longer the game goes. Playing against a Sicilian in a 25 minutes match is a horrible idea. All of his skills have a fixed range, so in order to avoid his first, be either out of range or near enough to him to not get hit by the bat. But only be near him if you want to attack him. He can defend himself pretty good with his ult. He increases his movement speed by 60% for a short moment and he gains immunity to slow effects. He also slows down enemies who he is hitting with his balls and heals himself when hitting them. His second skill, you should be able to easily avoid it by sidestepping it and not just stand still on one spot. Be always prepared for it to appear. So, what can you do against him? Well, picking a mage with a strong early game can make him fall behind easily. We will talk about them later as well. Really focus on finishing the game as soon as possible. He has the potential to turn around a totally one-sided game if you're not able to finish it, since he's not stopping to get stronger after you have his full build. Maybe you saw it in another video on YouTube already. With his full stacks, he can even one-shot the Lord. In reality, he will never become the strong. But after 25 to 30 minutes, he can one-shot almost any enemy. Using quick heroes who can dodge his skills easily are a very good choice. And obviously, Athena's shield can be your savior again. 
I wouldn't camp in the bush when Sicilian is near, especially in the late game. Most Sicilian players will just randomly nuke their first into the bush and deal a huge amount of damage to you when you're hiding in it. Last quick tip, whenever you play against a Sicilian and a Camilla together, never focus Camilla. When she gets low, Sicilian can hide her inside of him and you wasted your skills. Always focus Sicilian in this matchup. Jungle. There's only one mechanic you need to know. With her second skill, she can enhance her basic, first and ultimate. They stay enhanced until her shield that she get from her second skill is gone. So having a hero who can poke her easily and destroy her shield is a massive advantage against her. Otherwise, the new item Radiant Armor is the best counter item against her. It increases your magic damage reduction by 3 to 10 for each hit, capped at max 6 stacks. This will greatly reduce her damage, especially in the late game, because the amount of reduction scales with your level. Her ult cannot be interrupted by simple stuns, but airborne, suppression, freeze or transform works. So having a hero in your team who can do either of those can completely shut her down. If you are the target of her ult, try to use the obstacles to your advantage. If she can't follow you, because there's a big stone in her way for example, you can escape easily. Also always sidestep it and change the direction while doing it, to dodge as much of it as possible. Or if you can, just run out of her reach. Another thing you can do, when you're together with an ally, is taking over the damage. If an allied hero becomes low, you can simply stand before him and take over some of the damage, especially as a non-squishy hero. Like this none of you die and taking over a few hits actually doesn't make so much damage. Chang'e's damage increases with each hit due to her passive. So when your ally already took like 15 hits and you take over for him, the damage on you will be much lower. You can also of course hide behind minions or creeps. That's obvious, but I still wanted to mention it. She also have trouble against quick heroes, because she can't catch them without any help, since she only have slow effects but no stunts. Last, as another mage with no escape skills, ambushes, stunts plus high burst damage means almost certain death for her. Cyclops. First, never underestimate the damage from this little guy. Although he looks cute and funny, he can deal a huge amount of damage. I have the feeling some players don't take him serious, because they just blindly run into his skills. His mechanic is quite simple. Every time he hits an enemy successful with his skill, all of his cooldowns are reduced by 0.5 seconds. So for example, when he hits one wave of minions with his first skill, he reduces all of his cooldowns by 3 seconds in total because he hits each minion twice with his first. So don't get surprised when he starts to spam his skills, especially in the late game. With his second skill, he also gains plus 30% movement speed, so he can close down the gap between you and him. When he locks his ult on you, try to get away by hiding in the safety of your turret or run towards your allies, who will hopefully save you. By the way, the longer the ult chases you, the longer the immobilize effect goes. The shortest is 1 second and the longest 2. Like with other mages before, playing a hero with high mobility is a very good way to beat him. You can easily escape his ult and skills and hunt him down before you have the chance to escape. Also, since he must get quite close to his targets to land his skills, playing a hero with long range attacks works really well against him as well. Other heroes who work well are those with CC removal skills or who can gain CC immunity. They can make his ult completely useless. Purify and Winter Trunction works as well of course. And last, surprise, he's vulnerable to CC effects, high burst damage and ambushes. The first keyword is magical. Esmeralda. Her mechanic is quite interesting. Each of her attacks deal damage twice. One deals physical damage and one magic damage. Also, each time she attacks you, she gives you a shield equal to 135% of the magic damage she dealt. Sounds nice? Well, it's not. Esmeralda ignores all shield effects and with her first skill she can transform gradually all shields from nearby enemies into her own. So the first and obvious advice I have against her, never use any shields. They will not protect you from her and you will just make her even stronger. Next, be careful when she charges her ult. If she hits you, you're going to be immobilized for one second and she can melt you down while you can move. By the way, you can interrupt her ult while she's charging with stun effects. Like Alice, she's also used mainly on the side lane, but unlike Alice, she's already quite strong in the early game. Since she's also quite mana hungry, don't forget to check her mana status. 
Otherwise, I can pretty much copy and paste what works against Alice. Anti-heal and Demon Hunter sword works, stun and burst her down before she have any shield works as well, and long range heroes who she can reach. Eudora. Basically, I can copy and paste everything what I said about Aurora, although they have some differences. First, her second skill is an instant stun that she can always use, so charging mindlessly into her is a big no-no. When playing against her on the lane, preferably use preferably blah, preferably 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 use a hero who can bully her from a far distance where she can't reach you. Examples are Nana, Kagura, or Zask. Otherwise, if you want to get near to her to kill her, ambush her and take her down before she can stun you. All heroes with CC removal skills or CC immunity work very well, of course, as well as Purify. Athena's shield is also very recommended against her. And ironically, other one-shot heroes as well. Basically, give her her own medicine. God. When I started to play Mobile Legends, about one and a half years ago, he was always picked. Nowadays, you rarely see any god surfing around. Sad. There is not much I can explain you regarding his mechanics. One important thing is that whenever he deals 4 times damage to a single target, he will inflict 160 plus 70 percent of his total magic power as true damage. So never underestimate his ultimate damage, because with his true damage, he can melt down many heroes in no time. Avoid his first and second skill as much as possible, what is actually not that difficult for most heroes. Keep your distance to him for that and also to escape his ult easily by simply getting out of reach for him. With suppression, airborne, transform or freeze effects, you can cancel his ult by the way. So if your hero have one of those effects, just target it at him. Also, since he can't move while using his ult, you could just burst him down from the back. In general, quick heroes can be a big problem for him because he can't aim his ult that fast that he could ever catch them. Otherwise, what are mage heroes with low mobility weak against? CC effects, high burst damage and ambushes. Harith. Okay, his mechanic is more interesting again. His passive reduces the duration of any CC effect, except suppression, by up to 45%, depending on the amount of enemies near to him. So when you're in a gank, be aware that the duration of your CC skills is much shorter on him. With his second skill, he will dash and gain a shield when an enemy is nearby. The more enemies are around, the bigger the shield becomes. His basic attack is also enhanced and when he's hitting an enemy with it, the cooldown of this skill is reduced by 3 seconds. Next, don't get hit where the two waves crash. This deals significant more damage than just getting hit by one wave. At best, you're not getting hit at all of course, but if you can't avoid it, at least make sure to not be in the middle of it. When he activates his ult, and the sword appears, the cooldown of his dash skill is reduced by 4 seconds. And when he comes in contact with the sword while using the dash, the cooldown is reduced again by 3 seconds and the cooldown of his first by 1 second. That's why he can dash around almost endlessly when he's using his ult. So, what can you do against it? Well, the easiest will be to not fight him where the sword is. If it's possible, just retreat. In the early game, he's also not the strongest. So if you have a strong early game hero, Play very aggressive against him. If you let him snowball, he have the potential to dominate the whole game. If that happens, make sure to buy anti heal items to reduce his shield. Otherwise, anti dash heroes are the best hard counters against him, like Kufra, Minceta, or Fovius. Heroes with an instant stun and burst damage can stop him also very well in a 1v1. Talking about Eudora, Aurora, Saber, Jawhead, or Cho. Esmeralda works also very well against him for the mentioned reasons. The second keyword is MLG. Harley. <laughs> My little favorite. Right now, he's one of the strongest heroes. Well, until his nerf comes, but you don't need to ban him always necessarily. And I'm not only saying this because I love to play him. Yes, his combo can be very deadly, but also quite easily avoided. First his mechanics. His basic attack deals always magic damage. Almost all heroes deal physical damage with a basic attack, even when they are mages. In Harley's case, that's different. Also, whenever he damages an enemy, he reduces the magic defense of that target by 2 points for 3 seconds, capped at maximum 10 stacks. When he levels up his first skill to level 3 or 5, he will throw more cards of rounds. So be aware that on level 5 and 9, he has a huge power spike. But also know that after he hit one enemy with 3 cards, the rest of the card's damage decays to 50% and also additionally decay 
When his old Ring of Fire is around you. And since we talk about his old, the damage of his old increases with the damage he deals to you while you have it around you. In total by 50% of the damage you receive from him. So, if you receive 1000 damage while you have the ring around you, you receive an extra of 500 damage from the ring's explosion, plus the regular damage. What means, once it around you, try everything possible to avoid his damage. Radiant Armor works very well to reduce the damage of his cards. And Winter Junction lets you avoid the old damage completely. Just don't use it too early. Otherwise the ring is still active when the frozen effect is over. Next his ult will be blocked by allies. So as tank you can take it after you've built radiant armor or Athena shield easily. Next hide behind minions, jungle creeps or your lovely tank to avoid the cards. Like this you're not getting melted down. If you have a dash skill wait until Harley uses his cards or his teleport. Like this he has almost no chance to catch you. As a mobile hero you can have a really hard time against him of course. But maybe when your enemy picked Harley, you should be able to switch to another hero who has a dash skill. Next, having heroes who have instant stuns are super dangerous for him. If you manage to stun him and the time runs out where he can teleport away, which is 4 seconds by the way, it's almost a free kill. You can of course also trap him by waiting at his return point to beat him down. That forces him to either stay at the location where he is right now and he's hopefully getting beat down there or to teleport back or to teleport back where he's getting eaten up by you. Otherwise I can recommend to use Aegis or heroes who can build up a shield. Like this you have a high chance to survive his ult. Cardita. My wife will maybe hate me for this. She's one of her favorite heroes. First let's get into some of her mechanics. While using her first skill she's immune to any CC effects except suppression and have a 50% damage reduction. So if you're using your skills on her you should probably wait until she's out of her wave. Also as an example she can crash into Johnson with it while he's rolling and stop him while not getting stunned by the crash. Her passive makes a regen 65% of the damage she took within 4 seconds after it's activated. This effect has a cooldown of 30 seconds. You can see that it's up by this little bubble that's floating around her. If it's up it's a good idea to poke her and wait for 4 seconds before you try to actually take her down. Next be careful about her second skill. She can use it while using her first skill and it will knock you up much faster than when she is placing it just somewhere. Next and very important when she tries to use her ult you can prevent it by stunning her during the animation. So having a hero with instant stuns abilities is a really good counter against her. That doesn't help you of course when you're knocked up by her second skill. So really make sure to prevent that. And again for the protocol heroes with CC removal or immunity or purify works very well for that. As well as Athena's shield to prevent the one shot from her. Anti heal I wouldn't buy necessarily against her by the way. Except when you play against a godly Kadita like my wife. Kagura. Now we're getting to a hero who is considered to be one of the hardest to master and therefore also one of those you need to know the mechanics to be able to outplay her. That's why we're diving deep into her because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, that sounded awkward. Uh, anyway, first her second skill and her ult have a separate cooldown. One when she uses this skill while having her umbrella and one while she's without it. That's why her combos looks like this. Whenever she picks up her umbrella she gains a shield, stuns the surrounded enemies and also slows them down. With her second skill she can also teleport to her umbrella where the passive is also triggered. She also picks it up automatically when she gets too far away from it. So when you're chasing her while she doesn't have her umbrella be aware that she will try to stun and slow you to escape. When she has her umbrella she can use her second skill to dash into the direction she aims and importantly remove any CC effect except suppression of course. In general chasing her is really difficult if your enemy knows how to use her. Also don't underestimate her poking ability from her first skill. From a logical point it doesn't really hurt getting hit by an umbrella and it doesn't look as spectacular compared to many other skills but it deals a huge amount of damage for a poking skill. She can also check bushes with her umbrella. So when she puts her umbrella into the bush you're hiding in she can see you. While she has her umbrella her ult will knock you back and slows you down while when she doesn't have it her umbrella will link you to it if you're near to it and slows you down. The cooldown for her first skill is resetted by the way so she can move directly her umbrella again. 
If you not manage to unlink yourself within 3 seconds, you get pulled towards the umbrella and receive additional damage. This will change however with a revamp. Then there will be no more links, but an area where you're slowed as well. If you're still in that area after 1.5 seconds, you will get pulled towards the umbrella as well. It seems the slow effect is reduced though, but I can test it. I have no access to the advanced server yet, but I'm working on it. So I hope you have a rough idea now how she works. She basically has one poke, two blink and multiple CC skills. Now, how can you fight against her? First, by using high mobility heroes against her. They can escape her umbrella fairly easy and hunt her down even when she tries to escape. Examples are Lancelot, Gushen, Harif, One One or Fanny. Tanky heroes also work well against her because her damage is often not enough to melt down those kind of heroes. Examples are Esmeralda or Yuzong. When you want to stun her, you should do it while she doesn't have her umbrella. She only can remove CC effects from her when she have it. Just make sure to not push her out of the umbrella's reach. Then she can pick it up automatically. This is also the time where she's vulnerable against ambushes and stuns followed up by high burst damage. And no, I'm not getting tired of mentioning it for each and every hero where that fact applies. The third keyword is Simp. Lunox. Another hero with very interesting mechanics. I guess most of you know that she can be either in her order or chaos state. And depending on her state, she has different ults. When she's in her order state, she can transform into a light bulb and can receive any kind of damage or debuffs. But when she's in a chaos state, her ult is simply a blink skill. And afterwards, she can use a second skill without any cooldown for 4 seconds. Her second skill deals magic damage to a single target, slows you down by 10% and deals additional damage based on your max HP. So be really careful around her after she used her chaos ult or she can melt you down in no time. Her AoE skill also slows you down by 40% for 2 seconds and deals quite some damage. So be also careful about that. Now, what are the best ways to fight her? When she's in her order state, you have to either stun and insta delete her before the stun is over. So she can't escape with her ult or you play a hero that can follow her while she tries to get away. After she used her ult, she has to switch her mode to get access to her chaos ult and is an easy target for many heroes like Jawhead, Hayabusa, Benedetta or Lancelot to name a few. You can also try to scare her and bait out her ult. Otherwise, attack her while she's in chaos mode. Then she's vulnerable to ambushes. Just make sure to kill her fast so she doesn't get the opportunity to melt you down with her ult and second skill. Lo -ye. About her, there's one super important thing to know. Always try to avoid her yin yang reaction. Whenever she uses one of her first two skills, she either marks you with a yin or yang. After she uses her skill, it changes to the opposite. So for example, she hits you with her first skill and you are marked with yin. Afterwards, she hits one of your allies with her first again, then he is marked with yang. As soon as you two come together, boom, her yin yang reaction is triggered and deals massive damage and also stun both of you for one second. Her first skill is a charged one. That means she only can use it when she have a stack available. In her case, she gets one stack all 8 to 6.5 seconds. She can have up to 4 stacks and gets one immediately after a yin yang reaction. Also, the cooldown of it is only 1.2 seconds. So, she can spam it out pretty fast when she's fully loaded. Her second skill can also mark you when you're hit and also create the yin yang reaction. When you have the yang mark and the second is cast with yin, the yin yang reaction is triggered when you're near the middle of it. So whatever you do, once you're marked, stay away from your allies and her second skill. Especially when they have the opposite mark on them. We all know how social distancing works by now. So apply it here once you're marked. Also be aware, when she changes her mark on you or your ally, she gains a shield and plus 30% movement speed. Next, she also have a teleport of course. There I can only advise you to be careful. It can happen that all five enemies are in it or none. I wouldn't advise you to just stand alone next to it because if there are really multiple enemies coming, well, you're doomed most likely. And now I can repeat once more what immobile heroes are weak against. CC effects, high burst damage and ambushes. Hallelujah! Lilia. Let's talk again first about her mechanics. She uses her second skill to set her shadow energy somewhere. Next, she uses her first skill while we create a so-called gloom when it detonates the shadow energy. He will stay for 8 seconds 
unless he detonates another shadow energy. Then the time is resetted and the gloom is upgraded. He can be upgraded up to 4 times and with each upgrade he deals 30% more damage when he detonates a shadow energy. Her second skill is a charged one and can be stacked up to 5 times and has a cooldown of 1 second. After 9 seconds she gets one stack. Like this she can hunt down an enemy pretty quickly and deals a huge amount of damage. Be aware that she have her first 2 skills already available at level 1 so most Lilia players will be super aggressive from the beginning. You can see here that the gloom has a radius. In that her movement speed also increases. When a shadow energy is casted outside of it he will not detonate it. So to avoid him you should simply stay away from it. When she uses her ult she will not only get a lot of her HP and mana back and teleports to the position where she was 4 seconds ago she will also get immediately 5 shadow energy charges and can start to spam them around and feed her gloom. So what works well against her is what works well against any mobile mage heroes. Surprise! Another important thing to notice. I'm sure you've noticed the shoes that run behind her. If you're not seeing them it means her ult is on cooldown. So that's a perfect chance to kill her quickly. No, no. Oof. She can be annoying AF. And I love it. I don't think I really need to explain her skills. With her boomerang she would try to poke you non-stop. With Molina she transforms you into a cute cuddly thing. And with her ult she tries to finish you off or sends a flame shot into your face if you're still alive. Getting into a close combat against her is almost impossible if she sets her Molina right. So don't even try it. Ambushes are also difficult because she can set her Molina into bushes to check them and transform you while you try to hide in it. So what you need is a hero who can counter exactly these things. Any hero with CC immunity, CC removal or in general quick heroes will have an easy time against her because you can escape Molina easily. It follows you only up to a certain distance. So if you're out of reach it will not catch you. Without Molina she becomes much more weak. Ah I forgot. You can also escape Molina by simply going through a wall or by becoming untargetable. For example if you're concealed. Of course she have an escape mechanism once she dies. But in the end even if she gets away it's not so tragic. When she's away she have to recall to the base and before she's back you should have been able to secure the objective you're aiming for. Also this effect has a 2 minutes cooldown so in this time she's easy fodder for many heroes. Oh that. There's one very simple way to counter her and I guess most of you know it. Have at least 2 heroes on the team who can easily interrupt her ult and you're good to go. Whenever I play against the Odette and have a stun I always keep that one available for when she tries to melt down the whole team. If she have purify you should of course make sure that you're not wasting your stun while she have it active which you can see by the way. Although on a small phone it's kinda difficult. Besides that don't underestimate her poking ability. With her first, second and passive she can poke your HP down quite easily if you're careless. Otherwise like with all mages Athena's shield or radiant ammo can save your butt. Farsa. I think most of you are aware of her skill set. What you might need to know is that when you get hit by her first skill and afterwards getting hit it again you're stunned for one second. In general with her first and second skill she have great poking abilities. But of course her ult is her main damage source. To counter that you need a hero who can reach her quite easily and interrupt her. There are many who can do this. Yuzong, Tigreal, Cho, Saber, Harley, Jawhead, Kagura or Selina. But be aware while she uses her ult she can still use her first and second skill without interrupting it. So while you approach her she can stun and melt you down with her ult. Also make sure to know against what kind of Farsa player you play against. Some just spam click their ult. So in that case just run straight away from it without any zigzag. If she aims it then you can zigzag so she misses hopefully. Last Athena's shield can of course save you from her burst damage. I better mention this one time too often than one time too less. Although I wouldn't call her immobile due to her ability to fly away stunning and burst her down still works very well. In general once she's stunned she becomes very easy to kill. Veil. Copy and paste what I said about Aurora and Eudora. Although he can choose if his skills will have a CC effect or more damage most will choose at least for their tornado the CC option. His passive has one interesting effect. For every kill or assist he gains plus 8 movement speed up to 10 times. So in total 
he can get up to plus 80 movement speed, so don't be surprised when he is speed in the late game. Otherwise, to make it quick, since we are already so long into the video and I don't want to waste your time, use heroes with high mobility or CC removal or purify. Always be careful around bushes, Athena shield, because duh, and make ambushes, stuns and high burst damage, because you have no escape skills. Valir. Whenever he hits you with a skill, you start to burn and get magic damage equal to 0.6% of your max HP for 4 seconds. If you're hit 3 times, you receive an additional damage of 6% of your max HP and get stunned for 1 second. His fireball is a charged skill and can stack up to 2 times and have a cooldown of 1.5 seconds. After 8.5 seconds, he receives 1 charge. If he hits an enemy hero with a fireball, he restores 1 stack immediately. So, if he's hitting an enemy hero with each fireball, he can spam it out non-stop. On the advanced server, he can also restore them when last hitting a minion or a creep. But that's not implemented on the original server yet. This skill can be blocked by minions and creeps by the way, so you can hide behind them to avoid getting hit. His second skill is the firewall. If you want to get close to him, wait until he used it. The cooldown of it is quite long, so once he used it, you have a 6 to 8 seconds time frame to get to him. Or you play a hero who can overcome the CC effects by immunity or removal. With his ult, he can remove all CC effects from him except suppression and increases his movement speed by 50% which decays over 5 seconds. He also gets 4 vengeance flames around him, which he can use to enhance his first 2 skills. That means he can only use his enhanced skills 4 times after using his ult, so really make sure to not run into them, because they deal much more damage than the normal ones. Otherwise use heroes with high mobility or CC removal or purify or long range heroes. His skills doesn't have the longest reach, so with a hero who can shoot him down from a far distance, you have also a very good chance against him. The fourth keyword is burn. Eef. She's famous for her ult, but again, you should never underestimate the poking abilities from mages. Also, each time she deals damage to an enemy with her first or second skill, she gets a stack for her ult, kept at 10. That means each time she pokes you, she has an additional cast for her ult. She also increases her shield by 5% for each stack. With her ult, she will most likely first slow you down and then tap you to death. Although stuns cannot cancel her ult, except suppression of course, it still can make sense to stun her to get out of her field or to kill her of course. On the advanced server, it can be cancelled by any stun effect though, what means like with Farsa, if you have a hero who can easily interrupt her, you will have a much easier time against her. Since she can't move while using her ult, she's an easy target, for example if you attack her from the back. That only works when her teammates are dumb enough to not protect her from something like this. Otherwise, having a hero with a dash skill will let you escape her ult quite easily, can reach her easily and kill her when she can't move. Zask. Last, we have Eve's best friend. His first is creating this little annoying nightmare spawn. After it hits you twice with a basic attack, the melting will start. So best, stay out of its reach as much as possible, because the poke can really hurt. His second skill is casted by Zask and the nightmare spawn as well, so be really careful regarding this. His third skill is usually easy to avoid, but he can hide it in a bush for example. It slows you down by a whopping 80%, so really, don't just run mindlessly into it. His ult is what makes him hated by so many players. Before you melt him down, he just hides and deletes you with his laser. Fighting him 1v1 is for most heroes a really bad idea, so don't do it. When he's in his ult, I will just run. Just don't forget, he can teleport it quite far when he jumps out of it and extend his reach like this. So, either just run and kill him once his ult is over, because then He's easy to kill, like all other immobile heroes, or stun him and kill him before he can cast his ult. So, we are done, aren't we? What do you say? I have forgotten someone? Who, who could that be? Vexana! I wonder how many people wrote in the live chat or in the comments that I have forgotten Vexana. No, I haven't forgot her. I just wanted to troll you a bit. I find her mechanics really interesting, but sadly, she's so easy to counter. Her first skill is the ghost hand which basically immobilizes you, you run uncontrollable around. And her second skill creates a dark circle. When this hits you, you receive quite some damage, so be careful. When she uses her ult on you, 
This symbol is appearing over your head. You're also losing consistently HP for 8 seconds. And after this 8 seconds, or after you died, a puppet from you will appear and start to attack you and your allies. That puppet also deals magic damage to all surrounding enemies and can only attack with basic attacks and use the hero's passive skill. That means having a hero with really strong basic attacks in the team can be a huge problem because this puppet could become super strong. The puppet get up to 90% of the original hero's attributes. So if you fight a Layla puppet with a full build, it will hurt a lot. If the puppet becomes a tank, it's also problematic. It will be able to sustain a lot and constantly deal magic damage to anyone around. 5% of the puppet's max HP, to be precisely. Her biggest problem is that she's almost defenseless against so many heroes. All assassins, all heroes with decent mobility or all heroes with long range basic attacks can easily wipe her out from the battlefield. So without any protection, it is really tricky for her. Not for you of course, which is the point of the video. Now we are done. Thanks to anyone who watched the whole video. My voice is already breaking down. This was a really long one and I hope you have a good idea now how each mage works and how you can defeat them. Before we end, the fifth and last keyword is thanks. And yeah, that's it. I don't really have to say more now. Have a great day.